Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Across the Ocean. My name's James in Miami. And this is Matthias, straight from Zurich. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Across the Ocean, the YouTube show for lovers of underwater image making. It is, as always, so great to be joined by my friend and colleague, Matthias Lebo. How is life in Zurich, my good friend? How are you? It's not bad at all. I mean, uh, yeah, it could always be better, but it could always be worse, so I'm not complaining. Uh, been very busy lately, um, but the good thing about time passing by is that our Philippines trip is coming closer every single time I go to bed now. I can uh, basically start counting the days now until I board that airplane and we'll be together diving the Philippines. And I can't wait for that. No, I can't either. And in celebration of that, the fact that Matthias and I are actually going to get to dive together in the Philippines, we thought it'd be cool to do a bit of a lighter, uh, less educational, more of a fun episode and talk about our personal bucket lists of critters that we haven't filmed underwater. So basically animals that we may have seen or not seen before that we want to capture on camera. And this is kind of like, you know, we were just having a meeting about the Philippines trip and all the things we've got to do in preparation. And we were just kind of, you know, whimsically dreaming about what we'd like to see when we go there. And then we were talking about our friend Justin, the critter hunter, who's based in the Philippines. And then that got us talking about what our critter bucket lists would look like. So I'm going to hand it over to you. I know you've got three critters on your list for us, Matthias. What are you? I do. What are you excited to film? Well, um, this actually, like this list, is not a complete list. It will be way, way longer. But we agreed on just, just uh, talking about the top three in that list. And my very top critter that I've always wanted to film. I've seen them quite a few times, but I've never really managed to get a good shot of a flamboyant cuttlefish. I think they're just incredibly beautiful to watch as they change colors, as they as they hover around the ground, uh, above the ground, and especially when they're feeding, when they're hunting. That's something that is so fascinating to watch and so difficult to film at the same time. So this is something that's right on the very top of my list of critters that I want to film and maybe that's even gonna happen in the Philippines. There is definitely some of these critters around in the area that we're going to. Another thing that might happen in the Philippines is a ornate ghost pipefish. Again, a species that I've seen quite a few times, especially while working in Bali. We had quite a few of them in Bali. Uh, but while I was working there, I was guiding as an instructor, as a dive guide. So I've never had a camera with me back in those days. And uh, even though I've seen many of them, I've never managed to get a really good, you know, close up shot of the head of an ornate ghost pipefish and all the details of the body and all that sort of stuff. So that's definitely something that I'm uh, looking forward to. And then third and lastly, I've got the mantis shrimp on my list, but not just the mantis shrimp, but I wanna capture a mantis shrimps with its eggs displayed. You know, out in the open, not hidden in its cave, but out in the open, showing its eggs, that will be a, uh, a money shot for me, um, in my opinion. So that's, uh, that's the third one on my list there. And now before I pass it on to you, James, have you, well, I guess you've seen these critters yourself already, but have you filmed any of them? That's what I would really like to know. No, I, I'm, I'm 0 for 3 on your list. I've seen all three. Uh, I also worked in Indonesia, uh, also as a, as a professional dive guide. So wasn't as, as big into underwater filming as I am now, uh, way before YouTube came anywhere near my career. Um, so I have seen all three of those, obviously, but I have not filmed any of those three. Um, okay. Definitely of those, I think the peacock mantis shrimp is just one of the most beautiful creatures in the ocean. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, peacock is right because, as you say, they put on displays like a peacock and the colors are very similar, that kind of electric green and the royal blues and just really, really beautiful creature. So very cool. Uh, let's, let's, you know, let's see if we can make those dreams come true. So what have you got on your list? So on my list, um, I've got uh, two uh, macro 
uh, critters, and then one great big one. Um, the the two macro critters I have seen before but have not filmed, uh, and those would be the mandarin fish, which uh, I've seen a mandarin fish before from a distance, but we were on a liverboard and there was a uh, photographer on there. Um, I won't say what country the photographer was from, but but he was German. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's okay, I'm Swiss. He, I know. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't have said it otherwise. <laughs> if he was Swiss, I wouldn't tell you. I'd still say he was German. <laughs> but no, he basically hogged the the uh, the Mandarin fish. It was it was literally at the base of the anchor where the liverboard was tied up, and we were doing our shakedown dive in Palau. And this guy went down and just wouldn't let anyone else have access to. And and it was kind of a lesson in don't be that diver. It was kind of a mm. thing where I was like, you know. It, 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 it was like you know anytime you crouched in he would like give you the the back off sign like he it was his ocean or something and that it got very annoying it got very annoying uh, not just for me but for a lot of other people on the, on that uh, that boat so so mandarin fish seen one from afar would love to actually get closer and have a nice shot um i would add as well the uh blue ring octopus again seen many of them filmed them never the spicy octopus Probably best not to pet this one. Um, you know, was featured in a, in a James Bond movie even, where he used it as a weapon, uh, which was pretty hilarious. Um, but yeah, the spicy octopus, the blue ring. Again, I, I think they're they're uh, you know from from a movement across the sand when you see those blue rings dart and they catch your eye, uh, they're they're electric to look at. They're they're one of the most pretty animals. But yeah, a bit spicy. Um, so definitely. Definitely challenging there. Don't want any hands-on experience. And then the last thing, which you know, viewers of my channel, or when I've given interviews and people have asked, oh, what, what's on your bucket list? Uh, you know, filming or otherwise, I still have never seen a whale shark in the ocean underwater. You know? What? Yeah. I know that's ridiculous. I did my instructor course at Utila. I was there for six weeks, and they have a whale shark on the logo of the dive center. And the whole six weeks through there, nobody saw any whale sharks. And as soon as I left, they were seeing him left, right, and center. Uh, you know, Tanzania, I worked in Tanzania on uh, on the Spice Islands. And there you're pushing whale sharks out the way to see other things, usually, except for the exact period of time that I was there. Indonesia, didn't see one. We were actually on Whale Shark Channel, where the whale sharks use between two islands and migrate through. Didn't see a single one. So I'm, I'm. If we don't see one either in the Philippines this trip or in Indonesia next year, it is confirmed that whatever I am made out of is whale shark repellent. Let's not prove this, please. Yeah, no, it's absolutely brutal. I can't, you know, that's all there is to it now. So, that's my list. Matthias, your thoughts? Well, I'll, I'll do whatever, whatever I can to get a whale shark in front of you. <laughs> You heard it without, here first, ladies and gentlemen. Matthias promised a whale shark for me. Obviously, without, you know, touching or doing anything physical to the whale shark itself. But if I can, if I can be of any help, otherwise, I don't know maybe I can put some plankton on my on my fins and start just swimming towards you, and the whale shark will follow us. There you go. I mean, I sheep know. dogs don't we'll, touch we'll sheep, find, right? We'll, yeah, we'll find something to hopefully get that whale shark close to you. Other than that, um, very nice list. Uh, I'll have to say I've seen all of these creatures. Uh, I filmed all of these creatures um, in the past. Um, I'm particularly proud of a shot that I have of uh, um, two mandarin fish mating. That was in Yap, uh, on Yap Island. Um, yeah, so... But I'm pretty sure we can get you the mandarin fish, we can get you the blue ring octopus. And the whale shark, man, that really depends on how how much that whale shark shield is going to be active during our trip. Yeah, yeah, I got to work on that. How was your blue ring octopus experience? Where where was that? And uh, you know, that was that was in the Philippines, actually. It was nice. That was in the Philippines, um, in uh, in Bohol on Bohol Island, um, and it was very brief, um, nice, exciting, but very brief because it just swam across my frame and into a little cave and hid there 
Uh, I got a quick shot, but it's not it's not a you know National Geographic shot or anything like that. It's more like a memory shot for me to have proof that I've seen and filmed a uh, blue rain octopus. Yeah, if we do see one and it is very open to pose for us, I wouldn't be um, against trying my luck getting a better shot there as well. Nice. Bit spicy, don't touch. Yeah. And if you touch, make sure that your buddy's camera is turned on. Because <laughs> that's going to be a really good shot. shot. It's going to get a million views. <laughs> <laughs> bit spicy. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, this was fun, man. And like I said, you know, this is our last episode before we get to hang out in the Philippines and actually dive together. And we've got a great group of people coming with us to the Philippines. Um, you know, we are already thinking ahead. You know, we're, we're already almost done with 2023. We're moving into, you know, the, the, the third third, if you will. Yeah. And then next year, we've got our Indonesia trip, which I think is almost sold out. Or is it sold out? I think we've got two spots left, something like that. So it's like... Like, there is still chances, but it's not many, so, yeah. Yeah, and then, again, before we roll camera, Matthias and I are looking further ahead to 2025 and what the uh, Underwater Film School Times Divers Ready trip will look like for that year and where we want to go and all that kind of stuff is in the planning phase. So stay tuned for the channel, and as soon as we have more information, we will share it with you. But we have we have a short list of destinations, and to be honest, I'd be happy with all of them. So or any of them, yeah. I should say. No matter what we pick, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So happy days on that one. Matthias, as always, my friend, so great to have you with us and thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise as always. And uh, I can't wait to get diving with you next month. I can't wait to yeah, I can't wait to put that wetsuit on, the regulator in and uh, start filming and looking for those critters together with you. It's been way too long. Fantastic. All the best. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>